Welcome to yoga. This is Lindsay McDougall, your yoga teacher for today. I'd like to start on our backs uh, with um, props that you need, but we'll, we'll use without props for this opening part. And just a little uh, disclaimer here that I'm posting this a little later than I'd like to because I uh, injured my shoulder. So as we go through this practice, I will offer um, variations, and if for some reason I am unable to do a pose, I will guide you through uh, a version that, that will work. So this is a great time to pay attention, not only for myself and also you know, for those of you at home, in doing these poses, taking the time to really listen in and adjust where necessary or take any little extra movements in a breath time space that feel good to you, that feel nourishing, and that can bring the pose to the next level for you. So with that little thing said, um, just feeling very humbled um, by the human body, and let's get started. So knees are up, and let's bring the outer edges of the feet to outside the mat slightly so that the knees just knock in. And then cross uh, the arms across the chest, bringing the elbows together, and tick your fingers around the shoulder blades here. <clears throat> and imagine you're pulling apart the shoulder blades. Begin to breathe deeply, feeling the chest cavity, feeling the side ribs, back ribs, front of the ribs, and exhaling. Let's take another deep inhale. Deepening the breath, allowing the arms to gently pull apart the shoulder blades to widen the heart space. And really bring our breath to all corners of the body, into the shoulders, into the hips, the back, all the posterior muscles and the anterior muscles. And then let go of the shoulder blades and then switch the arms. So if you had the left arm in front, make it in the back and vice versa. And cross again, grabbing the shoulder blades. And I'm really noticing a difference here in my shoulders where they land, where my elbows go. So make any micro adjustments as you take a deep breath. In the breath, illuminating the body, pulling taut the stomach and lower abdomen muscles, and exhaling, releasing. Let's take another one where we lengthen the spine, pull all the shoulder blades apart, expand. hands behind the head and give the neck some massage here. Putting your fingers behind the uh, nape of the neck where the neck muscles meet the back of the head or along the spine, even the top of the spine. Just drag your fingers across massaging these muscles. And 
I have a tendency to um, crack my neck, so I'm going to crack my neck. I need to do that. Just getting a little looser here. Good. And then bring the knees into the chest. Give a hug, rock side to side. You can grab those elbows to the knees and pull the knees in. And press the spine down, the tailbone down, rocking side to side. And then hands behind the knees, rocking forward and back. So a nice spinal roll, spinal massage. Really tuck the tail, come to the mid back, upper back, rolling. And if you are a pro at this, awesome. If this isn't the easiest thing, practicing does help. <laughs> Good. And then let's tuck ankles under, coming to tabletop. Getting the spine a little more lubricated, lifting the abdomen, low ribs in, lifting the chest, look forward, look up in our cat. Or cow pose and exhale, arch the back like a cat, tucking the chin, inhale, lift, exhale, arch, inhale, lift, lengthen the spine, tailbone to the crown, elbows back, chest forward. Reach from the pelvic girdle, the pelvic floor, through the shoulders. And then exhale, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone, bring all that into the back one. Nice. And then let's lift the, come to a balanced tabletop. Lengthen the right leg behind you, left arm by the ear. And then, if you can, lift that right leg up. If not, just keep the leg lengthened, but use that core strength to get the arm to reach a little further away. And notice what that does to the core and the cross section. Exhale, come back to tabletop. Lengthen the left leg behind, right arm by the ear. Lift the left leg if you can. Reach the right arm further. Keep even weight on the standing chin and arm. And can you press that top of the ankle down? Exhale, return. Let's lift the right leg, left arm again. This time coming out to the side. Bring that heel out, lift the right glute, and back to center, look up, reach the right foot away, bend the right knee, and then grab that foot, say hello, and release, straight away, back to tabletop. Lift the left leg, right arm up, reach that right leg, uh, that left leg back, and then let's take it out to the side, bringing that heel around, and then lifting from the left side body, left side glute, arm is out wide, and then exhale back to center, look up, look forward. Lift the left leg strongly from the hamstring and glute, and then right arm comes back, bend the left leg, tap the toe, grab the inside of the foot, say hello for a little back bend, and exhale back to tabletop. Lift the right leg up again, and this time bringing it out to the side, make sure you have some space here. Drop the foot to the same 
uh, level as the knee out to the side. We're going to take this to gate pose, so I'll demonstrate this from the side. And then roll onto the heel, toes to the ceiling. Inhale, lift the arms, reach up. Exhale, side bend to the right. You can bring that right hand on top of the shin, left arm by the ear, and just make sure that you're lifting, tucking the tail, and using that tail tuck to revolve the chest towards the ceiling. So we're not kind of pooching our, our butt out and sticking our hips out, but rather pulling everything in and up, and that's going to help to strengthen the waist, the lower posterior chain, and then give us this nice openness in the chest so we can look and revolve where we wish. So as we move into these back bends, notice how the, the strength of the legs is going to keep our integrity in the back. Last breath. And exhale. Coming back. Hands down. Pull that right knee in. Table top. Take it to the left. So lift the left leg back behind you and then again revolve it around to the side. Place it down. Roll onto the heel. And with an inhale, reach up. Lengthen. Keeping that left hip rolling under, exhale, left arm down, right arm by the ear. So I feel that stretch in that right um, hip flexor, the right waist. So strong core, and then revolve the chest. Exhale, hands down, pull the left leg in, and make your way to downward facing dog. Lift the hips, reach the heels back. So listen to yourself, make sure that your down dog isn't too far away so that all that pressure is in your hands, but it's also not too short where your feet are completely flat and it's punching up into the back, just in the middle, where you can roll the inner ankles away, lifting the inner ankles, inner calves, inner thighs back, and pressing through the hands. Inhale, right leg up, three-legged dog, open up the hip, Bend the knee, take little circles here. And exhale, square the hips. Do little leg lifts here. So little uh, pumps of the right leg up in the air. You can lift the right hip slightly. And exhale down. Lift the left leg, three-legged dog. Lower ribs in, open up the hip, bend that left knee, reach the toes across the room and take circles with the knee, correcting the weight in the arms if they're even. And, and then squaring a three legged dog and Open up that left hip a little bit, but keep the legs straight, and then just press up, up, up with the leg for five more. Good, and then coming back, let's come forward to plank. Lift through the abdomen, strong spine, strong core here. Optional, dropping in the knees, let's come to Chaturanga. 
and baby cobra here, elbows in, tops of the feet down. Lift the kneecaps, lift the chest. Breathe into the abdomen. Let this heart come forward. And exhale, untuck the toes, elbows in. Reverse your way back to tabletop, child's pose, and downward facing dog. Find your strong down dog for two breaths. Breathing that Ujjayi breath in the back of the throat with the tongue on the top of the teeth. Breathing a straw like sound in the back of the throat. And on your next inhale, bend the knees, look forward, and hop or step to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway pose. Exhale, forward fold. Lift the kneecaps, tuck the tail, tuck the head. And when I say tuck the tail, I mean, I mean to lift Bring the six bones back, but keep the tailbone engaged. And then ankles together, feet together, slight bend to the knees, so let's come all the way up. And exhale, Tadasana, mountain pose. Good. So we'll make our way into a series of Surya Namaskar C. I did my studying, so we will do the Suri Namaskar, Suri Namaskar C that we see classically in the Yoga Sutras. So essentially, as we stand here in Tadasana and I, I call you into the Suri Namaskar C, we go from forward fold of hands clasped over the head straight to a low crescent lunge with the back bend, okay? And then in between, we're taking our traditional vinyasa, chaturanga. And then once we're in down dog again, same side of the one leg going back, we do crescent. And then when the hands come down, right leg pops back up again. So we'll go through this. I just wanted to alert you that it doesn't go straight from halfway to chaturanga vinyasa. We take the crescent in the middle. So with that, I want to get us warmed up in the back here. Nice strong back, which really starts in the core, in the lower abdomen, and the glutes. Okay? Inhale, sweep the arms up. Back bend here. Exhale, forward fold. Grab the hands in a clasp and roll the shoulders up and over the head, keeping the chin tucked. Inhale, halfway look up, bring the right foot to step back, crescent lunge here. Take this into a back bend, tail tucked, strong core, reach the hands back. A little tuck to the chin. Breathe here, and exhale, chaturanga, or knees, chest, chin. And down dog. Inhale the right leg back. Sweep it forward, look up. Exhale, left foot forward, grab the hands, roll the shoulders up and over in your forward fold. And inhale to back bend. Okay, so I didn't teach that perfectly, but we'll do go at it again on the left side. So inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, grab the hands, roll the shoulders. Inhale, 
place the left hand, left foot back, crescent pose on the left, tuck the tail, strong spine, reach, and then hands down, child's pose. Breathe out, and in, exhale, come into downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward, take the vinyasa. Left leg back, three-legged dog. Exhale, left leg forward, look up. Right leg comes to meet it. Grab the fingers in the clasp, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up, back bend here, and exhale down. Okay, so in between our crescent lunges is a child's pose. So I don't usually teach this, this variation, this Suri Namaskar C, which is why I had a little bit of trouble. But we'll go at it again. Feeling the sweat in those back bends. <laughs> Inhale, sit the arms up. Clasp hands, forward fold. Inhale, right foot back crescent. Sweep arms up, back bend. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale. Come forward, knees, chest, chin, high cobra. Exhale, tuck the toes, make your way back to down dog. Inhale, right foot back. Sweep it forward, crescent, left knee down. Exhale, look forward, bring both feet together in. Inhale, halfway, exhale, roll the shoulders up and over, tucking the chin. And inhale, come into a standing back bend, Urdhva Hastasana, strong glutes, lift the chest up the chin, and exhale down. Okay, let's do one more like that, the most correct way. <laughs> You guys are so patient with me, and it's one of those times. <laughs> Inhale, sweep the arms up, back bend. Exhale, grab hands, roll shoulders up and over. Inhale, look up, left foot back, crescent. It's lunar lunge here. Exhale, child's pose. Roll the body forward, knees, chest, chin. Come into high cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale the right leg back. Sweep it forward. Lunge. Exhale, frame the foot, left foot forward, inhale, roll shoulders up and over, and then strong legs, sweep the arms up into your back bend, and exhale down. Good. Let's come into a balance pose. We'll do our eagle posture. So let's bring it into a chair, sweeping the arms back and lifting. And then get your weight heavy in the right leg. Lift the left knee over top. And you can either kickstand the toes outside the right foot, then bring the left elbow under right. 
Lift both elbows. Sink the sits bones back. Lengthen the spine. If you do have the double wrap with the top of the foot behind the calf, that's awesome. Find your balance here. Open the back of the heart. Invigorate the legs. And then exhale, round the back. Bring the elbows to touch the knees like an eagle over a cliff. Up. And then unwind, bring that right leg out to the side, and then back behind you into crescent lunge with our Nasana arms. Lift the elbows, sink into that both hips with the left knee lifting strongly. Exhale, clasp hands, surrender, warrior to the front. Roll the shoulders up and over. And then take a vinyasa here. Once in down dog, take two nice long, slow breaths. Outer shoulders rolling down, head and neck are soft, but the rib cage is pulling up and back towards the thighs and heels. Inhale the left leg back, sweep it forward, look up, exhale the right foot forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come to chair pose. And then straighten the legs. Standing, back bend. Hands to heart center. And then let's take this to the left. So sweep the arms back, sit back, chair. Get heavy in the left foot, raise the right leg on top of the knee. Extend the toes or wrap the toes around the calf. Get heavy in those sits bones, and then right elbow is going to come under left elbow. As you open the back of the heart, squeeze the hands together, forearms together, lift the elbow, sit back. Notice what's different on one side or the other. Can you lengthen the spine here? Sitting even deeper and lifting even higher. And then exhale, roll the chest over so you reach the elbows towards the knees. Pull the abdomen in, look over your cliff here. goes away, and then coming back up to eagle. Once you're here, slowly lift the right leg, and then balance your way back to a crescent on the right side. Dharadasana arms, strong lift to the back leg, elbows coming up into a back bend. Take the hands in a clasp, roll the shoulders forward, surrender warrior. Tuck the chin, let the upper body be heavy. And then frame the foot and take the vinyasa. Inhale the right leg, keep it forward to the right wrist, left heel comes in, let's pinwheel the arms open, 
preparing for a triangle here. Front heel intersects back arch. And then bring those toes in 45 degrees angle of the back foot so that you're really favoring the weight in the back heel. And then inhale, lengthen the right side body. Reach, 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 reach. Until your hand finds the floor, your toe, your shin. And then lift the left arm, twisting the body open. So remember when we did this in gate pose, when I told you to make sure you lift through the tailbone, tuck the tail, lift and lengthen. Same experience here in triangle, where our legs and our glutes are really helping to mobilize the spine. Good. One more breath here. And then exhale, come into half moon, bend the right knee, lift the left leg. You can bring your right hand outside your pinky toe on a block. And then options here, if you like to bend the top leg, grab the ankle, and come into a bind here, or just work on getting lighter in the hand, lifting the leg higher, rotating the chest higher, and then exhale, standing split, bring the left hand down, right forearm behind the calf, tuck the chin, pull the belly in and up, in towards the diaphragm, And then let's step way back into crescent. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, vinyasa. From here, inhale the left leg back, sweep it forward to the left wrist, right heel down, and wheel the arms open to triangle. Lift the kneecaps, lengthen the spine, reach the left arm over far, far until you find the furthest place to, reach, to touch down, whether that's your shin, or your foot or the floor. And then right arm comes up, tuck the tail, rotate the chest. If it feels good to look at the thumb, that'll be where you're going. Find what's different in this side and take a breath here to adjust something that needs a little more attention. And then exhale, bend the left knee, hand on the hip, hop into your half moon. So find your variation. Left hand comes outside the pinky toe on a block or somewhere 45 degrees away. And work on lifting the leg or getting really light, maybe not even touching the floor at all with the fingers. Those of you who want to take the bind may do so. If you have the bind, you're pressing the top of the foot into the hand and using that to rotate the chest. Always good to practice, a little balance. And then exhale, standing split. Keep the right foot raised, right hand down, 
left forearm behind the calf. Tuck the chin. And can you bring that right leg even higher? Good. Exhale, reach the right leg back. Crescent, sweep arms up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, make your way to vinyasa. Find your upward facing dog, rolling shoulders back, and your downward facing dog. Another nice long breath here, rolling outer shoulders down. And inhaling, look forward, bend knees. On the exhale, hop or step to the top of your mat. Halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Sit back, reach forward. And straighten the legs. Back, baby back bend here. Again, keeping that lift. And exhale, hands to heart center. Good. So we'll try another balance and um, forearm work that we did a little bit last week, but I didn't take it to the full arm balance. So we're going to revisit that. And those of you who want to take the arm balance can. So we'll make a figure four with our legs. So getting heavy in the right leg, bringing the left ankle on top of the knee, a little above the knee, that is. And then sit back in your chair pose. Flex the heel, flex the foot, and then start to bend forward to reach the ground, reach some blocks, and eventually straighten the right leg. And you're going to keep this figure four shape and work the left outer hip, the right hamstring, balance muscles. And then for those of you who want to go into the forearm balance, you're going to place the hands down, bend the right knee, and hook the left foot around the tricep, the upper arm, placing the, the left knee on the other side, on the left upper arm. And then as you bring your balance forward, and then straight from the side. You're going to shoot the right arm away. And use this balance. So, Ekapada Kundinyasana here. And then rocking back. So, for those who want to take the arm balance or practice that, it's good. It gets really strongly into the left outer hip. And then once you've finished doing a little of that, inhale, sit back, raise the arms, and exhale, hands to heart center, return the left leg down. Okay? Good. So even if you try this a little bit, you know, it, it's all about taking it to whatever your limit is and doing it with mindfulness, with the breath. Just being open to what may come when we open our minds to what our bodies can do. Good. Let's take the right ankle above the left knee and then sit back in our figure four. Hands raise, and then exhale, keep forward fold, 
working hands down, maybe moving the ankle up higher, finding your stretch. And then again, from the side, I'll demonstrate the arm balance, bringing the hooking the foot around the left tricep, the knee to the opposite. So you're creating a shelf with the right shin. And then once that knee and that foot are in contact, rock forward so the forearms are perpendicular, and then shoot the left leg out. So this creates a strong stretch in the right outer hip. And have a little fun tinkering with that. For those in the forward fold, can you relax the head and neck of your back? And again, keep that heel away and those yogi toes away, so keeping that foot flexed. Good, and then sit into your chair with the four leg through your four cross coming up. And exhale, come to stand, drop the right leg. Good. Now let's take one more arm balance with the legs wide coming into Malasana. So you might want a block if, if, if it feels better to place the block for security. Actually, I learned this without the block and found it to be really actually helpful without the block. So with the legs wider, toes kind of coming off the mat, We'll take a squat here, place the elbows inside the knee, and with the knee engaging the elbows, elbows engaging the knee, this actually loosens the low back and the groin and creates a nice opening. So the knees and the elbows kind of become that fulcrum point, the, the rudder, if you will, of this pose. If you need to place the block under the tailbone and you have some hip issues, definitely go to where it feels comfortable for you, but where you also get into your breath and get into that, that edge where you're feeling some new medicine in the asana. Lifting the chest, another breath here. and then placing the hands on the floor, lifting the hips, knees up by the triceps and outer shoulder, rock forward, coming into crane pose, or also known as crow pose. Lift one leg, and then the other leg, toes to touch, and lift the back body up. Abs are strongly engaged here. When I first learned this pose, I came to I was really resting my knees quite fully on the back of my arm. Another way to do this is to have a block for your head. As you rock forward, you can place the block, you can place your head on the block, and that can help you with um, fears of lifting off. But try it with different knee positions, lifting one leg and then the other. And then really squeeze the knees in, lift the abdomen very strongly. Once you have the lift, pull the abdomen in. Inner biceps lifting. Side ribs lifting. And then exhale. Let's take a seat. Move any props away. And let's come into bridge pose here. So come onto our backs. Give your knees a hug. Say hello to the floor. 
and then place the feet flat and roll the shoulders underneath the chest. Tuck the tailbone, lift the hips, and then bring the hands under the sacrum in a clasp. And as you press the upper arms into the mat, that frees up the chest and the hips to go higher. So dig those heels in solid, lift the quads, lift the glutes, lift the hips, side ribs. Let's come into the full Satyabandha here. And then exhale, release, hang down. Windshield wiper the legs. And then we'll take this again. If you want to add the leg variation that I'll offer, then that's good too. Inhale, lift the hips. Take a clasp with the hands or pop the palms underneath the heels. And then press the hips up. And then from here, I'm going to take the clasp in the hands and then right leg comes all the way up. Reach the right leg long, point the toes, lift the glutes, lift the, the lower body up. And exhale, return the right leg. Press up again. Lift the left leg. Point the toes, reach the hips higher. So it takes a little balance, a little more core work to lift the hips here. Exhale, return, and drop the hips, and extend the legs or windshield wiper the knees. Okay, so for those of you who want to take what we just did and do that again with the Satubanda with one leg lifted, those who want to go into bridge pose, which is the Urdhva Dhanurasana, um, inverted wheel, take the thumbs to the ears, flip those palms by the face, and then just like we've been working in our arm balances, bring those elbows in, back of the, of the heart wide, walk the heels into the glutes, and then roll onto the top of the head for your setup. And maybe this is as far as you go, it's just on the top of the head, prepping for your push-up. But if you want to take it to the full posture, roll inner thighs in, sacrum wide, lift through the side ribs, keeping the elbows in, and then press all the way up. Again, sacrum wide, back of the heart wide, regardless of if you're in Urdhva or Satyabandha. Hollow out the armpits in Urdhva. A couple more breaths. And exhale down. Good. And then rolling onto one side. Let's come to a forward fold here. Legs out straight, roll the flesh under the sits bones away. If you want to bring a little height with a blanket to your hips, that's good too. Or a strap to reach your toes. But after a lot of back bends, it's nice to take forward folds to work out any last tension or kinks or anything. So inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, place the hands either side of the shins and just pull the palms in as you reach the heart forward. Be mindful of the legs. Remember, the legs have the power to open up the heart and mobilize the chest. So if you're rolling your chest, 
first of all, come back a little bit. If you have that caved in, come back a little bit so that the chest is upright and then really dig into those inner thighs, press the hips, sits bones, legs down. So there's that form. And then be humble and just listen in. Already, we're already getting all the benefits of the pose here. If more of you are flexible and you want to take uh, peace fingers to big toe mound, drop the head. We just came out of a lot of back bends, so this is going to be a little bit more difficult to ease into. So take your time. Let's spend about five, five or six more breaths in this posture. Squeeze kneecaps down, strong legs, inner thighs down, and work the spine long. I'm going to grab my outer, outer edges of my feet, press the balls of my feet, my inner toe mound away, and just notice what's opening up here. Another couple of breaths. Good. And then exhale, come slowly up. So we balance the back and the front of the body. Now let's take it to an inversion, to final, a final pose. I'm going to take my blanket to the half fold. Uh, and I'm going to bring the, the tassel side is going to go away from my head. And then the tops of the shoulders are going to line up with the edge of the blanket. And then from here, palms face down, press the hips up until you can catch the hips in the hands. And you can bring the forearms in a bit so the elbows come in and you can even just sit with the hips and the hands like this but I find it much easier to walk the heel of the hand higher and then pull the hips a little more forward towards the face with the legs moving away so a little bit dynamic here streaming energy going up and also lengthening lengthening the back correcting the posture getting fresh blood to the brain this is really good for the thyroid and the lymphatic system If this, for some reason, is difficult on your wrists or your, or your elbows, you can always bring your hips to a block with the legs up or legs up the wall. But some kind of inversion, you can reverse the flow. Take another three, four breaths here. Should be no pressure on the neck, just on the shoulders, tops of the shoulders. And then again, streaming energy up through the feet, active yogi toes, hips up, kneecaps in. Good, and 
then make your way slowly to plow, bringing your hands in a clasp, tops of the feet drop gently behind the head, which is a little different than the toes. It's a little more intense to bring the tops of the feet down. Once in plow, lift the hips, straighten the legs, roll those shoulders under, Keep a steady breath here. Then come into Karni Padasana, knees to ears pose. And slowly unclasp the hands, lay them flat as you roll the spine slowly, slowly, keeping the feet and legs straight. And then once the thumbs hit the sacrum, pull the elbows under as you lower the legs. And then rock onto those forearms and, and the top of the head into fish posture. It's a good counter pose. So strong legs, elbows in, lift the chest. And then open the jaw, stick the tongue out, cross the eyes. Exhale, lion's breath. <sighs> Inhale, lion's breath. Let's do one more, really sticking the tongue out, letting the facial muscles just express. <sighs> and then exhale. Make your way into Shavasana, palms face up, legs open and out to the side. And from, you should be ready to really sink in here. If you do need to take a happy baby or a twist, make this your Shavasana. Just like we talked in the beginning of class, what is it that you need to fully breathe and express in this posture? To become humble to the body and what the body is telling us. So our body is so linked and such a part of living with nature. It has its own connection and natural expression, like animals and birds and trees. And it's our mind that can get in the way, that can use reason or logic or linear thinking when it comes to the body. And when we truly drop into that moment and listen to God in our body, in our breath, spirit inside of us it tells us a whole different story what we really need to know now for our healing coming into this animalistic primitive self-regulating nature bound part of us what does it say As the leaves drop all around us in this fall season, life is happening. Imagine a bit of ourselves also letting go into this season and being soft and carefree like the leaves. Surrendering humble, no agenda, just really surrendering to the forces of 
nature. invite you to stay in this pose for a few more minutes. Being in your breath and listening in. Honoring yourself for coming to your mat today. Have an awesome week. Blessings. Namaste.